Oke. Okay. Oke, okay, so let's start. So we have been looking at uh, multi stage OTAs and how to stabilize them. So basically we started off with a two stage OTA. So say this is GM1. G1, C1. So this is a G2, C2. Now of course uh, we saw one way to uh, stabilize this was to use Miller effect and that uh, we saw Miller compensation to lot of detail. And uh, if you recollect when we looked at ways to stabilize multi-stage uh, systems. We had also come up with one other technique and we again derived it uh, using root locus. So let me quickly jog your memory. So for uh, this two state system, we have two open loop pools and they could be lying close to each other. So if you plot the closed loop uh, poles, they start like this and uh, do this. And we told for a well behaved settling response, we wanted the closed loop poles to lie on the real axis. And we could accomplish that by introducing a left half plane 0. So then the uh, root closed loop poles will do something like this. Okay. And uh, this, as I mentioned, is called feed forward compensation. So now uh, this is a two state system. The only job now we have is to introduce a left half plane 0. So how can we introduce a left half plane 0 here? Yeah, you just need to, I mean if you recollect the origin of the 0 physically why it comes because when we have the output obtained as sum of two quantities. Right. So here we just need to obtain the output as sum of two quantities and it's usually and it's usually easy to add currents in circuits because we just do this. So if this these are uh, currents I1, I2, this is I1 plus I2, right. So if these are I1 and I2, this current is basically sum of the two. So it's basically easy to add uh, the current. So what can we do? Yeah, so I will have to add something from here to here. What should I put? Yeah, okay, I showed the circuit before, so forget that you know that, right? I mean, let's try to derive it from scratch, right? That's how you understand it, right? See, I mean, one thing is to put up the circuit, analyze it, and see what happens, but to get a better feel for it, you try to see how you can derive it from scratch. So that way, you get some ideas to how you can synthesize new circuits, right? So, uh, uh, that that must be the obvious thing should, that should strike, right? So, why can't I do the, put a resistor here? So, this will, uh, this is fine or is there, is there some issue with this? I mean, what is suggesting is fine, right? Because the resistor is now going to introduce a path in this direction. Ah, the issue is the resistor is a bilateral element, so you not only have feed forward, we also have a feedback, right? And remember, this is first of all not a, we have not stabilized this yet, and you put in feedback, it's going to create issues, and not just that. What kind of feedback uh, is this now? It's positive feedback, right? Because see, if I increase this voltage, this will increase. This will also increase. So this is actually in positive feedback, which is quite dangerous. Okay, so you cannot directly do this, but uh, this is a good starting point, right? Because this is introducing a feed forward path, but in addition, it's all, it also conducts in the feedback path. So what can I do to kill the feed forward? Sorry, feedback conduction. Buffer. Yeah, you can actually put a buffer here. So this will make sure we have only conduction in this direction. I mean this is 
something similar to what we had with the <laughs> miller uh, miller of amp so there if you recollect here again we had both feed forward and feed back but here in miller of amp what was uh, what did we want did we want feed forward or feed back we wanted only feed back we didn't want feed forward so we uh, one solution was to put a buffer so here we have the reverse we want only the feed forward not the feed back so so this is a solution that should work and i mean uh, you can also further simplify it because here what happens is essentially we are sensing this node voltage with a high impedance here and then pumping a current proportional to this voltage and uh, what is the simplest block you know that can achieve this so transconductance right instead of realizing a voltage buffer which we saw has lot of limitations with respect to swing limits we can go ahead and put a voltage i mean we can go ahead and put a gm block there so that will give rise to the final circuit see one other thing i wanted to tell is oops sorry yeah yeah see here uh, see here one, uh, one of the issues was this was in positive feedback right why can why can't i not change the sign like this i mean let's say we don't have the buffer here and huh? sorry so Ah, so what will change? What will change with respect to the location? Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah
that's a recipe for instability okay and that's why basically we have this issue now the moment i go and add this feed forward path so whenever we have apply some input right you see that this path is going to be responding faster right because essentially we are bypassing this guy here right so the response from the top path is going to be much faster than the original path we have so usually this is called the fast path okay. so whenever we have some uh, input applied the fast path is what is going to respond quickly and make sure the output rises in the correct direction and the slow path here takes some time to respond and finally you know it starts to respond and we get the final output okay. so the fast path basically provides a quick and a dirty estimate right i'm calling it a dirty estimate because the dc gain of this path is small right it just gain of one stage but finally we want dc gains of both these guys okay so initially the fast path responds responds quickly but the dc gain is small so after uh, the output uh, responds quickly then the slow path takes over it starts to respond and we get the final dc gain of both these stages okay i mean this is not some uh, great strategy this i mean i don't know in cricket also if you notice people use it one quick example that pops to my mind is in ipl in kolkata night riders they send sunil narain up the order for batting mm. that guy is not a batsman they just send him so that he scores some four five sixes in the first five six overs so he is like the fast path right initially he boosts the run rate he gets out later and then the proper batsman come and you know stabilize the innings it's the same thing essentially cool so now let's uh, try to find the loop gain for this and uh, yeah let's try to write the dc gain poles and zero locations directly so first what is the dc gain here and for dc gain basically we will not consider the capacitors right they are open so if i apply some input here first what is this voltage v1 dc gm1 by g1 so what is this current gm2 times gm1 by g1 what about this current from the fast path that is gm3 times v1 okay so both these currents add up and flow through gl prime to generate the voltage so what is the final entire thing divided by gl prime okay so how can i approximate this further only the first term right because this is gain of two stages this is gain of only one stage and for all practical purposes this is basically the product of the two gains gm1 by g1 times gm2 by gl prime so this is uh, the dc gain now let's look at the poles and zeros how many poles we have here two poles we have two capacitors and i mean again each of them you can set it independently and again for a calculation of poles we can zero the input and if you zero the input this gm3 is not going to play any role okay basically we just have these two guys and there is also no coupling between them yes. nicely isolated so what is the first pole what's the first pole location g1 by c1 second pole gl prime by cl prime done so pole locations didn't change and that's what you expected right poles okay oh no no starting see okay what i meant is for calculation of poles right you are going to short the inputs isn't it pole location doesn't depend on the look, poles don't depend on the location of the inputs or outputs for finding the poles i can as well short the inputs 
If I short the input, GM is not going to play any role. The GM3. Is that okay? Yeah, I mean I included the output impedance here, right? Everything is see GL prime combines everything. I'm just saying the current from this GM3 is not going to do anything. That's all. Fine? Cool. So yeah, as expected, the pole locations are same as before, and that's what we also wanted, right? We the pole locations were untouched, we are just introducing a zero. Okay. So let's quickly find the zero. Again, for finding zero, we'll assume that this is output is at zero, and we'll apply KCL at the output node. So uh, this is the input. So can you tell me what will be the current coming from the slow path? Huh? Gm1 by, by. First, find the this voltage, right? What is V1? G1 plus SC1. Okay. So uh, then, what is the current? This current. This times GM2. Now, this current plus the current coming from the fast path must be 0. Hmm. What is the current from the fast path? That is GM3. This entire thing times V in of S. 0. Right? Yes. So we simplify it. So let's quickly do that. I'll have GM1, GM2 plus GM3, G1 plus S times GM3, C1. This will be 0. Now in the constant terms, which of the, uh, which term do you think will be dominant and which first term will be dominant. So basically for all practical reasons, I can ignore this guy. G1 is going to be really small. So what is the zero location now then? Minus GM1, GM2. By GM3, C1. Okay. So this is the uh, poles and zeros. So now let's quickly, uh, let me summarize the results. So the transfer function, you can basically write it like this. For beta equal to 1, the loop gain is k0 into 1 plus s by z1 times you have two poles. So the dc gain is approximately the product of the individual dc gains. We have uh, the first pole at g1 by c1, second pole at gl prime by cl prime and the zero is roughly at gm1 gm2 by gm3 c1 so let me uh, draw the body plot so the magnitude we, it's going to start from a0 and then i'll have two poles say here and here and then i'll have the zero maybe i'll say it comes somewhere here and then it will do this Okay, so these are the two poles and this is the zero. Ah, we will come to that. Let us say this is the case now. Hmm? So now uh, let us draw the face. So we have two poles and let us say the two poles are uh, nearby. Yeah, nearby and let us say they contribute around 180 degree phase before. So let's say the phase goes to minus 180. Hmm? Just drawing a rough sketch, and then when the zero comes, what will happen to the phase? It will start to rise. So it will basically do something like this, and asymptotically reach 90. Okay, this is 180. Yeah, I mean, I have not drawn it to scale. Assume that these two poles are, you know, like very before, right? I mean, it's okay. Assume that the two poles have come much earlier, that the face is roughly minus 180. Okay. Not, I have not drawn it to scale properly. 
so this is my omega u and i have this much of phase margin hmm? so to find the phase margin uh, what should i first find omega u is something i need to find right but even before finding so qualitatively from this picture uh, can you tell me how should the zero and omega u be related uh, yeah i mean should it be lesser or greater z1 must be less than omega u okay i mean you can understand it from two ways like first is see the act of making the system stable we are essentially making sure that around omega u it behaves like a first order system right you have two poles already so you better introduce a zero much earlier so that when you reach omega u it's like a first order system and number two from the phase also you can see when because of the two poles the phase was going to minus 180 now when you reach omega u your phase should have increased from 180 or decreased from you know 180 whatever and for that you should have the zero introduced much earlier so for a good phase margin at least this much we know the zero must be much before omega u okay cool so let's quickly find uh, omega u <coughs> i'll copy this Okay, and uh, please remember around omega u i mean omega u is located at a frequency which is much higher than all our poles and zeros okay so the, in that case uh, can you okay to do this yeah so around omega u can you approximate uh, how can you approximate the loop gain to be no no i mean in terms of this guy i mean basically when i am looking at omega u i am looking at frequencies which is greater than z1 p1 and p2 if i am looking at a frequency complex frequency s greater than g1 a0 by s p1 by p1 yeah so it's just going to be a0 times s by z1 upon s by s square by p1 p2 right and uh, to find omega u i'll just put magnitude of this at 1 so basically you put s equal to j omega u and equate it to 1 so what do you think omega u is you just put it equal to 1 right i mean the fleet is not yeah a not p1 p2 about that one okay yeah so i mean remember uh, for miller miller op amps where we just had continuously decreasing phase or when we just had only poles the omega u was this dc gain times p1 but uh, in this case where we also have an lhp zero we have this term okay so let's uh, plug in the values for each of this and uh, simplify the uh, expressions so dc gain is gm1 by g1 times gm2 by gl prime p1 is uh, g1 by c1 p2 is gl prime by cl prime and uh, z1 is gm1 gm2 by gm3 c1 so what all goes this guy goes g1 goes gl prime goes c1 goes so what is this this is going to be my omega u so let me write that also here omega u is gm3 by cl cool. so let's uh, find the phase margin now and for that first let's the uh, let's write the loop gain phase at omega u so what is what do you think this is i'll give approximate expressions so due to the two poles what do you think the phase is around omega u 
we can approximate as minus 180 and then due to the 0 I will just have plus tan inverse omega u by 0. So what is the face margin now? This is uh, this guy tan inverse of omega u by z1. Okay. So let me take it to the next page. So face margin is tan inverse omega u by z1. So let us say I want uh, critical damping. So what is the face margin corresponding to this? No, no, not 90. 76 degrees, right? So if that is the case, what is the relation between omega u by z1? Tan of 76, which is? Uh, it's 4, I mean. Tan 76 is 4. I mean, see, tan of a large number, right? Tan of 90 is infinity. So tan of 76 better be 4. 14. Okay, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I mean, I'm just saying this is basically 4. Okay. So, what this says is to get a good face, to get this face margin, I'll have to position my 0 to be 1 fourth of my unity gain frequency. Okay. Let me also write the expressions for each. Omega u was gm3 by cl prime. And the zero was at GM1, GM2 by GM3, C1. Okay, all of them are approximate equations. Cool. So now we have uh, okay. This is how I mean. Th basically, this is how you now design for the feed forward. So for a given omega u and given phase margin, you just fix the zero location and uh, you know decide the parameters based on that. So. So now we have uh, two op amps, Miller and feed forward. So obvious thing is to compare the two and see, uh, you know, what is better, in which sense. I mean, what is better in which aspect, right? And finally, there is nothing which is, uh, you know, great in all aspects. Right? You have pros and cons for each, just like in real life. Depending on your application and uh, you know your convenience, you. See if the pros outweigh the cons, that's all. So let me draw the Miller compensated op amp. So in case you forgot, this is the block level representation. I have GM1 and GM2. Let's say I have the zero cancelling resistor also. CL prime, this is GM2. So what is the face margin for this guy? 90 minus tan inverse of omega u by p2 okay so now let us say i want this to be also equal to i mean i can basically i can write this as p2 by omega u mm. right okay this simple trigonometric thing i mean you can just work it out so now if i want this to be 76 degree so what is p2 by omega u that's also 4 so which means I need to make P2 to be 4 times omega u. Okay. So uh, now let us say you are given a particular omega u and particular face margin and you have designed both op amps. Your omega u now let us say you want the op amp to be operated at a higher speed. So you want to increase your omega u. So in Miller op amp you see that you have to go and make the second pole to be at a much higher frequency than it was before and uh, in the feed forward case you just need to make the zero i mean to at a, i mean basically here the zero has to be at a lower frequency i mean okay for, given omega, for a given omega u you just need to fix the zero at a lower frequency here whereas here you have to push the pole to be at a higher frequency which of the two do you think is easier the making things making something to be at a low frequency is easier right see because here what is the expression for p2 approximately for miller op amp what is p2 roughly gm2 by cl prime okay now my cl prime is fixed mostly by the load capacitor 
So if I were to increase my P2, yeah. I'll have to go and increase GM2. Yeah. So I'll have to burn more and more power. Yeah. Okay. So the bottom line is, let us say, I mean, I should have explained it properly. So now let us say you have designed it and then you want to increase the phase margin. The only way to increase the phase margin is to increase P2 for a given omega u, right? And for increasing P2, there is no other way than to go and increase GM2 and burn more and more power. Okay. If you want to decrease that one, ah, let, let's do, let's decrease this guy, right? Let's come to that. Whereas in feed forward case, if let us say you want to increase the phase margin, I just have to make sure the zero is at a much lower frequency. That's all. Right? And you see, this is the expression for zero. So to decrease zero, what all can I change? No, if I increase GM3, you see omega u also changes, right? So I shouldn't change GM3, but I can change the rest other stuff. I can uh, decrease GM1, decrease GM2. I mean, if you think about it, if you scale it such that you uh, decrease the sizes and the currents at the same time, DC gain doesn't change. We saw that. Okay. I mean, if you think about it, it, it is GM by GDS, and you write the expression, and it will it will be dependent only on voltage voltage. So if you make sure the voltage voltage doesn't change, the DC gain doesn't change. You look at scaling of circuits later, but uh, yeah. So here, uh, decreasing, I mean, decreasing Z1 is pretty straightforward, right? I can increase C1. Increasing C1 basically boils down to go and putting a capacitor at some node. That's easy. I can uh, as well decrease the two guys, which means I'll go and reduce the power. So usually, uh, that's advantage with feed forward. It can consume a lower power potentially. When you design for a given phase margin and omega u. Okay. Yeah, we'll see that. We'll see that exactly. So, but uh, with respect to stability, it is actually pretty good. Mm. Is that point clear? So, if I increase E1, Z1 is going to reduce. If Z1 reduces, my phase margin is going to increase a lot. But as he mentioned, uh, increasing, uh, doing this actually has another uh, problem. I will we'll come to that now. So the main issue is the following. So if I take the feed forward structure. So this is GM3, right? So again, I will assume that we are going to put it in negative feedback like this. Okay, and let's say I apply a step here. Okay. So uh, now if I sketch the output, now let's say the uh, op amp has a DC gain of A0. What will be the final value to which the output is settled to? I am applying a unit step, the op amp has a DC gain A0, so what will be the final, huh? no, no, it's a, see, this, this is negative feedback, right, do you guys understand the question, see, I am putting this guy in negative feedback loop, yeah, applying a step at the input, unit step, if the op amp has an open loop DC gain of A0, what will be the final value to which the output will, yeah, A0 is infinity, it's 1, but ah. with finite A0, what is it? Right? Okay, this is the value it's going to settle to finally. Right? So, let's see what happens at t equal to 0 first. So, when you first apply this step, let's say the output is 0, so the capacitor is uncharged. So, t equal to 0 plus, it will, uh, the voltage will still remain 0 because the capacitor doesn't change its voltage instantly as we can't have impulsive currents. Okay, So, at t equal to 0, 
plus this is also zero volt. So it is as though you have applied the step directly across the op amp. Hmm? Now, uh, when I first apply the step here, which of these two paths will respond first? The fast path is going to respond first. Okay. So initially, what you'll find is that the output will keep increasing only due to this guy. Okay. So the settling is going to happen as though you had only the GM3 stage. Right? So uh, only the GM3 stage will cause the output to rise. And let us say you had only the GM3 stage, right? You didn't have the this guy. Okay, we had only the GM3 stage. What will be the uh, output level to which it will settle to finally? It will be smaller, right? Because GM3 stage has a smaller DC gain than the two stage combined. So if you just had that first stage, it will do this. But now we don't just have this. So uh, the slow path will also start to respond later. So the final output, oops, what happened? This is the settling only with GM3. Now the actual output will follow this. But let's say after this point, the slow path will start to respond. And then the output will rise. And because you actually will find that uh, the output will take very long time to settle to this value. It will be hovering around this for a lot of time. But to exactly settle to that value, it will take a lot of time. Mainly because this path is slower and this path is much faster. Okay. Uh, without going into a lot of details, I will show some simulation results so that you will understand. So here what I have done is I have taken a uh, feed forward op amp. DC gain of 60 dB, that's 1000. So uh, it has a unity gain frequency of 9.2 mega radians per second, that's here. This is 0 dB, okay. And the phase margin is 78.2 degree, okay. Now we take two stage Miller op amp, same DC gain 60 dB, same omega u, okay. And phase margin is slightly worse. Okay, so now I take the two op amps, put it in negative feedback, apply a step, and if I do that, this is the response I get. So the one in blue is uh, feed forward, and one in yellow is Miller. So as you see, uh, the output will settle finally close to one, and the Miller op amp settles much faster. Okay, the feed forward takes actually a much longer time to settle. And that's mainly because of the combination of this slow and fast path. Why can it go above? It can go above because you have the zero, you can't exactly predict it. And if I actually zoom in and show you, you'll even appreciate it better. So here I'm showing the same response, but I'm showing the uh, scale in dB. So that you can see minute differences. So the dotted line you see here, that is the expected level to which the output has to settle. And you see the Miller guy has settled already, whereas the feed forward has still not settled. And actually if I, uh, here I have shown the time only to 0.12 microsecond. And even if I uh, look at the time close to 4 microseconds here, the Miller has already settled. But the feed forward is still taking a lot of time. Okay. So this is one uh, issue with feed forward that uh, although it can have a lower power for a given phase margin, it will take a lot of time for accurately settle. Right? I mean, it's uh, by this time, the output is almost close to the required value. But if you want very accurate settling, this is not the option. So the here the plus side is oops. You can get actually a faster accurate settling. Okay. Now there is uh, one other uh, issue, not an issue, another property of feed forward. And to understand that, uh, let's get the Bode plot for. 
both miller and feed forward so for the miller op amp we have the dc gain you have the pole this is omega u and then the other higher order poles come later okay and now the phase is going to do this it's going to be minus 90 and then drop like this and let's say this is minus 180 Oops, maybe I'll show some so let's say this is minus 180 this is our phase margin okay now let's say this is for beta equal to 1 now if I make beta to be half, what will change here? Yeah, in the two plots what will change? Yeah, I mean in the magnitude plot is going to scale down. So we will have something like this. Phase plot is going to remain unchanged. So you see that the phase margin has actually improved a lot. And we saw earlier also, right? Beta equal to 1 was the worst case feedback factor for stability. This is true for mirror op-amp. So let's quickly check what happens when feed forward. So I have the two poles and then I have the zero. So now the phase let's say goes to minus 180 and then kind of increases and does something like this. This is our phase margin let's say. And let's say this again for beta equal to 1. Now I scale beta so let's say the magnitude plot scales like this. Yeah, so here you see the phase margin is actually very small and in fact if you have higher order uh, say 3 stage feed forward the phase will actually go to minus 270 and rise up and in that case it can actually become unstable if you reduce feedback factor. Okay. So uh, beta equal to 1 is no longer the worst case feedback factor here uh, that we cannot say I mean for example see here uh, if I keep reducing beta further right. So let's say this is some very small value of beta something. For this case you will find the phase margin I mean okay, yeah I mean let's say the phase is let's say doing something. So I choose a very small beta again the phase margin will be better right. So we have a range of feedback factors for which the stability is good and a range of feedback factors for which the stability is not great. So we cannot make a general purpose swap amp with feed forward saying that uh, I stabilize it for unity feedback to work for any other feedback factor. So usually we use feed forward for uh, specific cases where you know the feedback factor is fixed and then you can go out and design. Okay. Cool. So now let's quickly uh, extend this to three stage. So we will follow the same technique as we did for the three stage Miller op amp. And what was the technique? How did we come up to three stage Miller op amp? Second stage. Second stage replaced by another two stage Miller op amp. So we will do the same thing. So this is my normal two stage feed forward. So here the second stage I am going to replace by another two stage feed forward op amp. Right? So this is the feed forward. Okay. Now this is going to be another two stage feed forward. So you'll have something like this. So here how many poles and zeros do you think we will have? 
how many poles we have three poles so how many zeros do you think we should have two zeros okay so if you sketch the uh, bode plot let's quickly do that so you have say three poles 1 2 3 yeah and then you will have to have uh, two zeros like this so we plot this phase phase will try to go to minus 270 and then it will rise because of the two zeros and reach minus 90 so that at omega you have a good phase match so let's say this is minus 90 so now by this time you should understand the logic so i can even go for a higher or higher stage and uh, if i do that before omega u what can you say about the number of poles and number of zeros number of poles minus 2 okay again the logic is same when i reach omega u i should behave like a first order system so we have five poles i better introduce four zeros after that before i reach omega u and i mean this uh, this kind of feed forward compensation is also it's very popular in the sense uh, let's say you have a negative feedback system where let's say you have put two stages sorry uh, let's say three or four stages i'll just put in block you have cascaded three stages this you might do for getting a higher gain or getting a higher order filtering or something but this is going to introduce lot of delay so uh, simplest way to stabilize this guy is to actually go ahead and add fast paths so now this is basically having three delays let us say we can actually do one bypassing like this so this is going to bypass this delay here and this might also not be good enough so you put one more guy here that's basically what we did for the three stage feed forward right and uh, i mean see if we go for three stage op amp it's not necessary that i should do only a three stage feed forward or i should do only a three stage miller op amp mm. see for example here how did we come to the three stage feed forward we replaced the second stage by another two stage op amp and the two stage op amp was a two stage feed forward but is there another two stage st stabilized op amp that you know yeah. miller op amp so basically i can also uh, replace the second stage by miller op amp so we'll quickly show that in the class see this is the two stage feed forward now to get a three stage i am going to replace the second stage by a two stage op amp and this two stage is a two stage miller op amp that's all so okay, we'll show the signs later let me make some space this is the first stage second stage and i put the miller capacitor and the zero cancelling resistor and i'll finish it that's it so now uh, can you tell me what should be the signs for these guys so first it starts with this if i call this a and b it should be uh, negative a should be negative because the miller capacitor should be in negative feedback around that particular stage so this guy must be negative right only then uh, this guy is in negative feedback around the particular gm so then what should be this guy if i call it a should be negative why is that so positive great right uh, for feed forward we need to have a lhp zero which means if i i mean if i call this as plus and minus in the fast path there is no sign inversion so even in the slow path i should not have a sign inversion only then i have the lhp zero so which means this guy has to be negative that okay so now because this already introduces a sign inversion so you invert the sign again here so so that overall there is no sign inversion 
Now, uh, sometimes if you find that uh, this is not stable enough, one thing again you can do is add a feed forward like this, right? So you can put one more feed forward like this, and for this, this has to be some plus gm. Yeah. So I mean, now you know the techniques. Depending on your application and uh, you know the stability you want, face margin you want, you can combine all of them and come up with new new programs. That's all. Okay. Cool. So we'll stop here and uh, we'll continue.